Hello reformers and welcome back to A Clash of Kings 3.0. It's been a while since we've visited, uh, well, Essos, technically, that's where we are right now. And as you can see, there's actually a Lorathi vassal attempting to raid one of our villages. And I, I was here, so I was just traveling back to Lorath just to take a look at what's going on there. And, well... Lo and behold, we have someone that we need to exterminate, and obviously we are going to do that. So, let's take him on. Now, I do have a pretty reasonable idea about what I'm going to be doing in this episode, because usually I don't have much of a plan. I kind of just see what the game is going to throw at me, and then I just adapt accordingly. But now, there is actually something that we need to do, and there is a number of rather, I think, easy to take fiefs in the Novoshi lands. So what we're going to try and do is go to Novoshi lands and see if we can, you know, actually take something. Take something pretty nicely. So yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do that. And as you can see, I've also changed Elias's name. I have also changed the faction name as well. The faction name is now something completely different. And maybe it will be something that you will all appreciate. I think it will be. And it's a little bit more in keeping with the lore and everything like that. It is not the Stumble Lands because I, I, I don't know. I personally feel like that's a bit too close to the Stormlands for my liking, but it is something to do with stumbling, and I think that's that's perfectly fine. That's nice and fitting for our character here. Do need to be a little bit careful though. All the peasants are dying. All the peasants are dying. Can you start shooting, please? Seems like they are starting to shoot, but obviously the peasants were being quite annoying in terms of literally just blocking their arrows, so we haven't had many of our archers actually able to kill anything. And yeah, oh yeah, also what I've done is I've sent out some recruiters, and those recruiters are hopefully going to survive, and they're hopefully going to bring back a bunch of units for us to use and level up and everything, because... As it stands, I think we really do need the reinforcements for our castles and things, because even though we have Lorath, and Lorath is pretty decently defended, it has about 230 in there, the castles and various outlying fiefs that we have, they're not very good. They're not very well defended. Wow, look at that. <laughs> oh my, that's not very good, is it? 35 peasants. Ouch. Okay, so yeah, we do now to get to take this guy prisoner. Ah, uh, we might actually want to do that, or should I just allow him to go and get some honor? Let's just allow him to go and get some honor. I think that might be good. Now, we are gaining some peasants. Do these peasants level up? No, of course they do not. Pretty sad about that, actually. I was really hoping that they would level up, but no, no. Ah, well, never mind. Okay, so we do have the opportunity to level up some Veil Longbowmen, which is really nice. And I now have a number of people that I would like to put in a garrison, most notably over here, I think. Because as it stands, that doesn't have a very good garrison, not at all, actually. So if we go over there and actually just place these peasants in there, that's going to make a difference to, you know, how many people will decide to, you know, try and siege it I suppose and hopefully that's going to be enough I mean there's only 73 there I mean I might actually have I sent out a recruiter from this place I don't think I have I think I've sent out a recruiter oh oh yeah this is actually deferred isn't it ah I should have gone over there and given it to someone I I probably should make should I just make Melly should I just make Melly a a vassal right now. I don't really want to do that because she only has, I think it's two in leadership or something. So maybe it's, it's not probably going to work too well. Oh well, never mind. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm just going to quickly have a look and see the fiefs here. 181. That seems pretty reasonable. Let's just have a look at Norvos. It's probably going to be like 300 or not. There's actually only 64. What? Only 60. Okay, let's do it. Prepare the ladders. It's only going to take four hours. Hopefully no one will be... Uh, okay, Drollo, yes, thank you. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah. Hopefully, anyway, no one will appear and try and take me on. No, it seems like we are absolutely fine here. And what, how much do they have again? 64? Yeah, I think they only have 64. This is going to be either very easy or it's going to be one of those things where we get surprised by how difficult the siege actually is. As it stands at the moment, though, I think we're actually fine. I think we're okay. I mean, I'm going to place my archers on the outside here, 
And I'm just going to allow them to sort of bombard the enemy. Because the enemy is actually going to come out here. Wow, they're really going to come out? That is very, very strange. I would not do that if I was them, really. Because look, look at what's happening right now. They have no... They don't have shields! This is the most hilarious siege I've ever seen, with the exception of maybe, you know, the the ones which we which we like to call the death. The death maze, the death, you know, death castles, you know, most notably Grey Cliffs is very, very much like that. But look, look at this. This is just... This is absolutely insane. Okay, you can kill that one, please. Yes, thank you. There we go. I am super surprised. Really very, very surprised about this. Okay, so there you go. We're done. <laughs> that was it. That was absolutely it. Okay, so it seems as though we know now that if we're going to be doing battle against Tyrosh, that we are going to be within a, well, in with a very, very good chance of, well, basically just, well, destroying them. There's nothing they can do. It is literally one of the most easy factions that we've had, apart from Lorath, of course, because they don't have shields on some of, the, I mean, look at that, on their glaive men. All of them are glaive men, so they have no shields. It's insane. Absolutely insane. Okay, well, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with that. And we have taken Norvos, which is one of the biggest towns on Essos, which is kind of hilarious in itself. Okay. Right. So, I, I, I'm i going to defer appointment of a lord, mainly because I don't really want to... Uh, yeah, I don't really want to kind of have to garrison it, and it's obviously going to have no, no people in there. So, let's plunder it and share the spoils, because... If I were to take it selfishly, then I think I were to, I, I was probably going to lose honor or lose renown or something like that. I think there is a kind of stipulation surrounding that. So if I share it, then technically that doesn't happen. So I still get the 9,500, which is pretty nice. Anyway, we're going to go into the tavern here, see if there's a ransom broker. There probably is. Yes, there is. Thank you very much. I'm just going to sell real quick. Yeah, there's only 160. And, oh, Alan is here. And Sir Felton Flowers. And Fenner. Wow. Huge amounts of companions. Okay. Sure, join me. 5,000. Yes, I probably shouldn't have spent 5,000 on him, but I think he's pretty good, actually, so. Oh, and Alan's joining us for free, and Fenner is a free folk, I believe. She is a member of the free folk, if I recall correctly, and she joins for free, too. Wow. So three companions, basically for 5,000. That's pretty nice. And we can buy axe guards from here. Okay, I guess I'm going to do that. I don't know what the Axe Guards are like, but we're going to try them out. Oh, whoa, they actually look pretty nice, don't they? They do look pretty nice. Okay, so Sir Felton Flowers has joined us. I think he's an archer, isn't he? Isn't he an archer? Let's actually just take a look real quick. See if he... No, no, he's just he's just a regular unit. Okay, well, that's absolutely fine, I suppose. Let's just give him this. Give him these things as well. No, he can't use that, of course. Oh, well, that's a shame. Okay, so let's just take a look at his skills. Doesn't he have, like, a huge amount in power draw? No, he doesn't. I seem to remember, however, that he was an archer in a previous version, but maybe I'm getting mixed up. Probably is. Anyway, Fenna is going to obviously become quite a beast. She did become a beast beforehand. A very, very good companion. And we're just going to continue leveling up our Veil crossbow. Not crossbow, but longbowman. Thank you very much. And the Axe Guards can probably go a little bit higher in the ranks. And there you go. We have succeeded in taking Norvos. I'm actually really surprised that we were able to do that so easily. Rios is under siege. Otherwise, I probably would have liked to have gone over there and taken that. That would have been pretty impressive. To take two two towns in one fell swoop would have been really, really cool. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so Lorath is no more, as I thought it might be. So obviously, you know, letting that guy go in the previous... You know, previous field battle was probably the best course of action. And we can now take Stonehill. I think we're probably going to take Stonehill. The Novoshi Axemen are actually pretty good, I think. So it might be a bit too difficult. I think they have shields. Don't they have shields? I'm actually unsure about that. But we're, we're, we're going to obviously find out and see. But yes, anyway, let's, let's see what the layout is like. Oh, no. Well, they don't have any... Wait a minute, they don't have any archers, do they? I actually don't think they have any archers. Okay, so we're just going to hold fire right now with our archers, and 
we're gonna we're gonna just see what's going on here. So I'm gonna tell my archers just to sort of, you know, kind of follow me a little bit, and they don't. They don't have archers. That is fantastic. They seem to only have throwing weapons, and as we know, throwing weapons are not particularly accurate, says he as he gets absolutely murdered by one in a second. No? No? Nothing? Okay. Yeah, anyway, point is, this is probably going to be probably one of the best opportunities we, opportunities we have, actually, because if there's a vassal in here and he happens to have some archers, then we're probably going to suffer some pain. But as it stands, we are in a very, very good position. I mean, apart from the thousands of axes currently being thrown towards us. It is not the house of flying daggers, it is the house of flying axes. Thank you very much, yes. Okay, so I'm going to try and get all of the archers in here as much as I can before I tell them to fire at will again, because obviously I don't want them to just stop firing. There you go. Okay, so I think we have enough now. And hopefully, this is going to mean that we will be in a really, really good position. Obviously, I, I don't know. Obviously, the throwing axes are going to be pretty difficult to deal with for our archers, because obviously they're going to just stand still and they're a bit weak at that point. But as it stands, look at look at how many archers we have. I mean, really, I don't think they have anything to do. They can't really do much, can they? But I can do something to them because obviously I can crush through blocks here, which is really quite nice. Yes, yes, show yourselves, show yourselves. I'm, I'm just gonna poke them. I'm just poking them, really. They really don't like you know, getting poked, I guess. So this is going to be, this is pretty nice. Yeah, there we go, there we go. And uh, I mean, just look at this. We've actually eliminated most of them, apart from them up there, but obviously they're not doing much because they've run out of throwing axes. They've literally run out of throwing axes. So if we were to decide to, you know, come up here, then I think we'd be in a really, really good position. But obviously we do need to take into account that our Raven Tree archers and Carhold Longbowmen, they're going to run out of ammo eventually, but they are eliminating a bunch of units as it is. So I don't think we really need to worry about that too much. I am actually just going to stand... Oh, okay. Apparently I'm not going to stand there. No. Apparently I'm not going to stand there. I literally thought to myself, I'll just be able to stand here and, you know, I'll, I'll be able to take the, uh, the, you know, the, the various axes coming towards us. But no, no, apparently not. Because they just receive reinforcements, I think. So that's probably the reason. Anyway, I think what might be the best thing for us to do right now is, uh, well, we've eliminated about 70 of their units, which I suppose is okay. So maybe the best thing would be to retreat and come back in with full quivers. Maybe? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure about that right now. Because as we see, I mean, they're still bombarding them. So I think we can probably just relax. We can probably just relax and chill out. And hopefully we'll see, a, you know, we'll see a bunch more casualties happen. I mean, look at that. They've received more reinforcements. A second batch of reinforcements, which is very nice. Yes, take that. Oh, yeah, that's what we like to see. All right, so I'm going to just get my shield out again. I'm just going to try and bait some of their axes to be thrown because I don't really want those guys over there to be able to support their main force. So hopefully if I can make that happen, then obviously it's going to be pretty decent. But I am really, really overjoyed that the Novoshi do not have any archers. I mean, I'm kind of surprised at the same time because you think to yourself oh these guys oh they're very well armored and everything and if they had archers then this would be one of the most fearsome factions no doubt but they don't so pretty easy i guess yes come out do, do, do we still have arrows it seems like we don't have arrows anymore yeah seems like we don't have arrows okay we're gonna be retreating no oh. Come on, let's retreat before we lose any more of our Carhold Longbowmen, please. Thank you very much. Okay, so there you go. So, we took out 108 of them, which is, well, very nice. And we now will take another four, day, four, four days, no, four hours to construct our ladders. As you can see, the wages at the moment are exuberant. But, if you take into account the fact that we have so many prisoners at Lorath, and hopefully a ransom broker will appear there, you know, reasonably soon, then we'll be able to get that back up. Obviously, you know, we are a little bit... Oh, 
a little bit, uh, yes, a little bit weakened here. So if a vassal comes along, then we're probably going to be in a bad position. What's this? You feel a bit peckish and decide to settle down for a while to fish in the nearby lake. You start to doze off when suddenly something yanks on the fishing line. You decide to give it some line. The fish got away. Uh, well, that's the thing. I don't really mind about that so much because whenever these sort of events come up, I'm, all, I'm always kind of half expecting to lose some stats every single time that happens. So... For example, if I let the fish get away, maybe it's going to reduce my intelligence or reduce my charisma or something. Ah, uh, wouldn't that be hilarious? Ah, oh, well, never mind. Okay, so seems like, yeah, we have 80, oh wow, we have 86 archers. 86, okay, so this is obviously going to be another one of those where I tell them to hold position and then I let the infantry go in first. I think I'm just going to let the infantry go in first just so that they can absorb some of the throwing axes and by that I mean they're going to be target practice so yeah sorry about that axe guard I actually don't really want the axe guard to go in there to be honest I mean I have a bunch of those and they don't have shields so this is going to uh, this is going to be pretty painful for them I'm, I'm kind of a bit sad about that actually because they did cost quite a bit and well I mean there's not much more I can do really is there I mean I have to put something in here to get the get the axes being thrown, you know, and the archers don't have anything. They don't have heavy armor or anything like that. So, obviously, telling these guys to come in here would. Uh, oh, I guess it's fine. I don't know. Oh, anyway, I think we're good. I think we're good. How many of these guys can we actually fit in here? Well, obviously, quite a lot. Okay, so let's tell them to fire at will. Oh yes. Oh, there we go. We're going to start seeing a bunch of casualties coming in. And I think we actually... I think these are these are basically the remaining units. I don't think they're going to be receiving any more reinforcements. Or at least I can, I can hope that they won't. And I'm actually not going to block our units. I'm just going to allow them just to fire away here. And I don't think there are any other units. There's one over there. But obviously he's... I think he's probably going to get shot relatively soon. So we don't need to worry about him too much. Maybe. There's actually a number of guys on the roof over there, which is a bit worrying, because obviously they're going to be quite annoying to deal with. Yes. Crushing through blocks. I very much appreciate weapons that do that. Okay, come on. Do you not want to fight me? Come on. Let's, uh, let's get some people over here. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're talking about. Nice. Yes, that's exactly what I want them to do, because as soon as they come out... They're weakened, and they're attacking me, and then, well, then they get huge amounts of arrows in their face. Yes, excellent. Okay, so, can I can I continue to just lure these guys out here? Yeah, it seems like, seems like it. One thing I am a bit worried about, though, is if we were to... Oh, no, no, it seems like they're actually... Yes, they're, they're annoyed at me. They're annoyed at me, yes. That's exactly what I wanted them to do. Because now they are coming down here. They are distracted. They are attacking me. They're allowing their shields to be lowered. And everything is... Oh, yeah, this is actually really good for us. Look at that. That is very, very good. Because basically they're forcing themselves into a bottleneck. They're forcing themselves into a place where... Basically, our archers have free reign to just destroy them. I mean, look at that. They they had the last straw. There was nothing they could do. That was it. And now we can tell everyone to charge in. We can tell everyone to come up here and eliminate the last remaining units. I mean, there's only, what, four of them? Yeah, there's only four of them remaining, and we just lost two. So I think the decision to retreat there was probably the correct one because, obviously, having a full batch of quivers is very very important for an archer centric army which is what we have right now so yeah that is pretty cool if i do say so myself and i think that is the last enemy yes it is can you can you please kill him can you please kill him if if someone dies to this guy i'm not going to be very happy about that now there we go okay <laughs> because knowing knowing my units knowing my luck that probably would have happened that probably would have happened. Okay, so there you go. We did take them out. King Elias Mormont has 19 kills, well, technically wounded. And we have freed a couple of people. And this guy is part of Bravos, by the looks of things. 
And this guy is also, I would assume. Oh, no, no, he's actually not. He's part of... Kohor? Yeah, it seems like he's a part of Kohor. Well, that's that's interesting. I'm actually kind of surprised that there were a number of, I don't know, different different vassals from different factions there. That's very, very strange. Okay. Well, we do have some Unsullied to rescue here, which is always welcome. Some peasants, of course. I'm going to probably put those in the garrison of some place. And there you go. We almost have a full army. Very nice. Okay, so there we go. That's wonderful. And here's a pretty terrible shield, so we'll just allow our companions to loot that. Defer appointment of a lord once more. And we're probably just going to plunder it and share the spoils, because I think what we're going to do... Oh yeah, by the way, we are now House Stumble. Yes, we are now House Stumble. Yeah, anyway, point is, we're probably going to be giving Norvos to myself. I'll probably give the villages to... Probably to Melly, I think. Hasn't she leveled up? No, she hasn't leveled up yet. Well, she, I think she has about two in leadership or something. So maybe if we could get her another level and get her to three, then that would be quite nice. And then maybe I'll make her a vassal. And then I'm probably... I, I might actually make Felton Flowers a vassal as well because how much... He, he has no leadership, but he is pretty decent in shield and riding and weapon master and power strike. So I just need to level him up a little bit. What is he currently? He's at level 6? Wow, he's at level 6. Okay, that's pretty decent. Anyway, I think that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.